Well, joining us right now is Walid Shobat, former PLO member, Palestinian who converted from Islam. And he has a great new book called The Case for Islamophobia. But he's not here to talk about his book. He's here to talk about who he thinks, let us say, the trail leads to. Walid, welcome back to the Savage Nation. Thank you, Michael, for having me. Well, I know you suspect that there's a Saudi family that's tied to terrorism, correct? Correct. If you so, look, so, Walid, I'm sorry to cut you off. I don't mean to do that, but... Who is this guy in the hospital? What does that have to do with anything? Well, you know, number one, you mentioned just a minute ago he was tackled down. It was for conspicuous reasons. In fact, uh, good Samaritans have obtained photos of three Saudis. And I can see Saudis. I don't know what a Saudi looks like. Uh, three Saudis, very conspicuous, the dark glasses, uh, one with a hat, uh, jackets covered up, you know, carrying objects. And the report says one of them went back towards the wall where the bomb was placed and uh, that they, they even had a baby stroller. What would three students do, be doing with a baby stroller anyway? It's covered up with mm. And uh, when I began to look into it, as was a result of your show yesterday, I began to look at several issues. Uh, the MIT students uh, issue. Uh, there was a Subai who was the M in the MSU. He had two links to family terror members. One of them even died, uh, was killed in Syria a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but the interesting one was this morning when I began to look at uh, 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 Abdul Rahman Ali al-Harbi, who is the person of interest now. Uh, I guess the status changed from suspect to person of interest. Uh, looking. Wait, wait, let me hold it for my audience now. You're saying there is a person of interest but with an Arabic name? Absolutely, Abdul Rahman Ali Al Harbi. Oh, I, because by the newspaper accounts, they don't know who involved, who's involved at all. I mean, all all points seem to lead to a tea bagger, according to uh, the left wing. <laughs> I have been several years working on researching terrorism, and I can tell you, this is an Islamist terrorist from the Middle East. No question about it in my mind. Now, does the FBI know this, or they don't even know this? They're not allowed to think this, or what? <laughs> the FBI is telling us that they need help. I guess they don't know this. Of course they do, because the photos of the three Saudis is pretty much, you know, out there. It's been published by Asia Times. And the, the, here's the issue. The photo of Al-Harbi, the person who's in the hospital, what you see in the English language, that is not the photo that is going around in the Arabic major media. I have obtained a photo of Ali al Harbis in my website of how he looks like. In fact, I was the first in the country to post that photo. In fact, when the Good Samaritan found that photo, he linked, connected the dots with the photo he obtained of the three Saudis at the scene on the final uh, run, you know, over there. And he mm -hmm. said, look at these two, they look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. person of interest looks the same as one of the three Saudis at the scene. When I began to examine further the family links of Abdul Rahman Ali Al Harbi, the man of interest, what did I find out? I found out from the official records of the Saudi government, 85 list of Al Qaeda. Several of them were relatives of his. You have number 15, Badr Saud Uwaid Al Hawfi Al Harbi, same. Number 73, Muhammad al-Harbi. Number 26, Khalid al-Harbi. 29, Raid al-Harbi. Abdullah al-Harbi. Faiz Ghunayim al-Harbi. And relative... Well, so, well, just so the average listener who's distracted, you're saying this family, uh, Harabi, seems to have connections to terrorist acts? What Americans don't understand is the Klan is very much linked. In fact, if you look at a dowsari who attempted to kill President Bush... He, his family supports him openly in the main family website. So the support to terrorism comes from a clan support. This is not like Ted Kaczynski, in which you don't find the Kaczynski supporting the man. That's so in the midst. <laughs> Al Harbi's has also several detainees in Gitmo. So this could be easily made as a revenge. Uh, oh, 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 but of course the government doesn't know this. Of course they do. They know everything. In fact, what's the use of them asking for our help? They have the same photos. They scrubbed 
They scrubbed the Facebook of Al Harbi. Everything you see on his Facebook is not what used to be on the Facebook. Him jumping in Disneyland, that's not what was in the Facebook. What was in the Facebook, him dressed up in Arabic garb. So, Waleed, I have a, I'll, Waleed, hold on. I have a caller on KF from KSO named Karen asking this question. Why would the FBI cover for the Saudis? Well, it's very simple. We have no Al-Qaeda problem. This would be very embarrassing for President Obama to have Al-Qaeda problem, number one. Ah. Number two. Uh -huh. In other words, it would, be, it would show that there's a failure in the entire intelligence apparatus. There's a blind spot. And the media. Tell me, did Fox News report he was a Saudi? No. Well, that's because they're 19% owned by a Saudi royal family member, correct? Thank you very much. If, if anyone doubts me, Go to the Fox News archives, search Saudi Arabia and see what you find. We're the ones, and you, who report on what goes on with the Wahhabis in Saudi Arabia. That's what is really going on. A so you're telling me that Bill O'Reilly, uh, Sean Hannity, Brent Baer, all of them are, it's a cordon sanitaire around this, this, uh, this Saudi connection? Unfortunately, I've been on their shows, all of them. Unfortunately, I have to tell the truth. That's what it is. It's a, it's, it's a cover-up from all levels, media as, as well as government, because how did these photos go away? How were they scrubbed? Why would the Boston police official, when this was in the media, all over the media, that there was a Saudi national in custody, why would they say this is the first time they've heard about it? How could the, the police make such a statement that this is the first time they heard there was a Saudi national? How does that make mm -hmm. sense? It doesn't make sense. I don't, I don't know, but... Now, let's go back to yesterday, the bombing. There's allegedly a Saudi national in the hospital with shrapnel wounds in his back. He, the hospital's surrounded by machine gun-toting um, law enforcement officers, and that, then he's released today. What, what, what do you make of that story? Well, it's very easy. If I, in fact, I issued a press release last couple of weeks showing the Saudi involvement in terrorism with Khaled Dawsari. Uh, in, uh, several of Saudis who were even involved in 9-11, uh, the government of Saudi Arabia pressures uh, the United States to release many of these people. And unfortunately, you know, people forget 9-11, right? And 9-11, there were Saudis flying. No Americans were allowed to fly. Only Saudis were allowed to fly. Three princes were also killed in Saudi Arabia who had links to 9-11, and everything was covered up. I had showed tremendous amount of stories of what goes on in Saudi Arabia, the Saudi royals, how they're involved. In fact, there is an, a plea to Mr. Obama by the Saudi royals to release several terrorist thugs, Saudi in, inmates. Uh, yet, to so okay. So let's say that's your suspicion. The FBI must be looking into it, or, or would you say that they would automatically sweep it under the rug? I would think they were going to sweep this under the rug. You were right. Uh, within a week, this whole thing will be forgotten. I have. Oh my God! Just like Benghazi, it'll be buried. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So what's this with the pressure cooker? This is what uh, signature to you, Waleed. You you know you've been around a long time. I remember when I was a, a local host. I think you were on my show 15 years ago or 14 years ago when I was on a local station KSFO. You've been around forever. Former PLO member. I mean, you know what you're talking about. You know, you converted from Islam. This is a, a, a pseudonym that you use for fear for your life. So you have a real mission. What's with the pressure cookers? Well, in my days, they used what they call babur, which is a uh, same similar to pressure cooker, but it's, it's uh, something that you can uh, put uh, all kinds of other dynamite, gunpowder, whatever. Uh, explosive material. But, but if I were in the FBI watching movies as I do, wouldn't it be the first lead to find, you take the metal from the pressure cooker, you find the, the, the shrapnel that they put in there, the ball bearings that ripped off 30 people's legs? Couldn't you trace the ball bearings and the manufacturer of the pressure cooker? Or do you think that they're so skilled that they would have bought it at a rummage sale or something like that? Well, if they were able to find the Pan Am... Uh, remember that guy uh, in Libyan? Uh, they were able to find who he was uh, from uh, clothes, you know. So it's very easy. Yeah, but that was under that was under a different presidency. We have a different uh, mentality, a different regime. They don't want to find who did it because they're afraid it'll link itself to uh, to to uh, Islamic, uh, you know, groups. They don't want that. There you go. That's the problem. The problem is Islamic, and then the major issue is also a Saudi connection. Anything with a Saudi connection 
it's usually covered up under the rug. If people in doubt, look at my story with the three Saudi princes, how they mysteriously were killed and died. Where can, Waleed, what's your website? Please give it out on the, on the Savage Nation. Uh, Shoebat.com, just as you spell the word shoe and the word bat, S-H-O-E-B-A-T dot com. Okay, I'm going to look it up myself later, truthfully. So where do we go from here? It'll be forgotten by Friday, correct? I, I, I believe so. It will be forgotten, swept under the rug, and there'll be still no clues. But who, you know, who knows? It depends. If there's some good Samaritan in the government and the FBI who'd come out and speak out, we never know. Yes, yes. In other words, we need some operative in our own government who's not going to go along with the program. Very difficult to ever find such a player because they'll lose their pension, and they themselves will be nailed to a cross. Mr. Savage, I worked with the Homeland Security for 10 years. I provided them Al-Qaeda locations in Libya. Latitude, longitude, everything. I provided mm. them, even with my cousin, for 10 years. When finally my cousin, who was involved in this whole thing, and not this, this, this incident, but others, he was refused to be taken by the Canadian government. The Canadian government wanted to give him to the United States government. The United States government gave him a free flight back to Palestine. So I know firsthand dealing with the apparatus. I know what it's like dealing with the apparatus. They wanted nothing to do with information. They wanted nothing to do with facts. Mm. Uh, the Canadian Peel Police pleaded with me to have the American government take the terrorist. The American administration refused, and he was let go. He was involved with a filmmaker, if you recall, The Innocence of Muslims, with a methamphetamine case in which the monies were funneled to Hezbollah. He had years of records wanted by the FBI, yet the FBI had him in Canada, refused to take him. So I know wow. from experience. This is amazing. No, this is getting more interesting as we go along, Walid. And in a way, it's terrifying because if this conspiracy, now you're not, let's just cut it off at a certain point, though. You're not saying that the U.S. government was involved in the plot. It's just that they don't want to be caught with their pants down, nor do they want any connections to Saudi Arabia. Is that what I'm hearing? That's exactly what it is. Exactly. So why would a Saudi do this? That's the real question. What, what's in it for them? Let's say it's a student from a Muslim student association group, uh, allegedly at one of the universities in Boston. Let's take that tack. What's in it for them? Why would they do a thing like this? Well, uh, because Al-Qaeda stemmed from Saudi Arabia. You have 100, how many Americans know? We have 100,000 Saudi national students in the United States of America. 100,000. Just the very names that I examined from your report yesterday, when I looked at it, involved family involved in terrorism. Saudi believes he is a superior being, and he represents Islam. And Saudi Arabia's involvement with the uh, Abidine family is extensive. I've shared that information. No one can refute it. Extensive information in which the manifesto by Saudi Arabia to take over the United States of America and to eliminate the Jews who are the obstacle in the United States for an Islamic takeover. And this was, this was basically blessed by the Saudi government itself. Oh. So the Saudi government is still anti-Jewish? They, they still have that fanaticism? Absolutely. Oh. Do, does, uh, do, does Obama know this? Of course he does. His grandmother raised funds to send the uh, to send African Muslim students to Umm al-Qura University. Umm al-Qura University is the number one university par excellence that graduates. Uh, yeah, but Obama's brain is is David Axelrod, who is of Jewish descent. Does he know this? Well, I don't know if Axelrod knows this, but Saeed Obama, his uncle, knows it, and he communicates with Obama. I have even showed an entire interview on Al Jazeera in which Saeed Obama, the uncle of President Obama, proudly supporting the whole mechanism and his cousin Musa Ismail Obama, very well linked with the Wahhabist apparatus, raising millions and millions of dollars under the guise of aiding uh, AIDS victims and orphans. When the man was asked on national television in Saudi Arabia, where does the money go? He says it goes to recruit Wahhabi, to Wahhabi schools. All of this is... Ali, we're going we're gonna to take a break, and when we come back, I would like you to explain to my audience what the Wahhabi sect is, because people don't understand where it originated, why it is different from mainstream Islam, and how it teaches and why it teaches 
terrorism. I'll be right back with Walid Shobat, former PLO member, whose new book is The Case for Islamophobia. And remember, he knows what he's talking about, as you can hear. If you listen to him, this is not simplistic uh, gibberish. This is very dense stuff. I'll be right back. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. We're talking about the, the, the greatest intelligence failure in America since 9-11-2001 being swept under the rug by the fanatical Obama-controlled state media. We are speaking with a former PLO member, and if you remember who the PLO was, they were a, a, a terrorist organization that conducted horrendous events around the world. Waleed Shobat is his pseudonym. His book is The Case for Islamophobia. He says he's sure that it's related to Saudi Arabia and Saudis. He's explained why. He's given his his uh, <coughs> he, uh, his address, his uh, you know his internet address, which I'll give again. But I've asked him to come back now to to the show to explain why the Saudis are doing this. Waleed, welcome back to the program. What is the Wahhabi sect of Islam? Well, it was founded by Muhammad Abdul Wahhab, who wanted to revive Islam to its glory days. They created the Muslim World League and other institutes, especially the uh, IMMA Institute for Muslim Minority Affairs, which basically uses Muslims to immigrate and to use student visas all over the world, especially the Western country, especially the United States of America. And this is why we have 100,000 Saudi students. And it, the manifesto, which... The State Department, uh, Hillary Clinton, her assistant, whom I have been is member of the Institute of Muslim Minority Affairs. This is not a small organization. I mean, she's married to, to a Representative Anthony Weiner on top of it all. Correct. She wants to be the first lady of New York, the place that we were bombed, the, the, that we were you know, attacked. And yes. Right. Yes. This, this, the manifesto that the Saudi government, the Wahhabist ideology, this is what their declaration is verbatim. It says, Islam is the religion of the whole world, sent by Allah through Muhammad to both races, the jinn, that is the demons, and the ins, which is the mankind. It is a religion for all humanity as commanded by the Holy Quran and the Prophet's correct path. This promise was confirmed since Islam did spread throughout the whole earth and multitudes streamed to it. The idea is to basically take over the entire globe using the oil wealth. Uh, the Muslim Minority Affairs talks very much in detail, it's all detailed in my book, and showing Huma Abedin's mother's involvement in the whole issue, which, by the way, she turned well, this out... this is very clever, so they, they hate the Jews, and she's married to a Jewish man. That's a good cover. It, of course, it's permissible, because under Muruna... Unbelie no, this is unbelievable. So the Wahhabi sect is a sect that teaches basically the a crusade. A modern-day crusade, because for hundreds of years, Muslims got along with Christians and Jews around the world, didn't they? Yes, uh, but not under the Islamic history. That was very limited. Walid Shobat, stay on the line. Opening it up to you, the callers, now. If you have questions for Walid, the phone number is 855-400-7282 from anywhere in the United States of America. 855-400-SAVAGE. Before we take your calls, you can be dialing and getting through. I want to go back to a short uh, radio clip from yesterday's show. I predicted they would release the Saudi national who was tackled and held. I want you to listen to clip one. CNN said it could be a domestic terror event, reminding them of Oklahoma City. Then CNN went on and said, well, it could be a political statement from a local domestic uh, group. Anything but the person who's under lock and key in the hospital. So look, here's what I think is going to happen. They're going to release this Saudi in the hospital. They're going to wipe their, wash their hands of him and say he had nothing to do with it. He was only an innocent spectator injured like the other uh, people in the crowd. And that it was a, a, a false uh, lead and he had nothing to do with it. And anyone who said that it was a Saudi or a, an Islamic person is a racist. That's coming later or tomorrow. Was I right or wrong? Waleed, did you hear that clip? This is what I said yesterday. And this is the, the playbook today, isn't it? <laughs> absolutely correct. You're absolutely right. It's exactly what happened. Uh, the, the man is linked to Al-Qaeda family. Uh, no question about it. His family members, some of them are leaders in Al-Qaeda. 
uh, I showed several cases similar to this case with Khalid al Dawsari who wanted to uh, execute President Bush, weapons of mass destruction as well, showing the support level at the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia itself from princes down to major clans in Saudi Arabia. The whole mechanism is interlinked with the spread of Muslim minorities all over the globe. And this is part of the Saudi plan, which we, I was the first to capture, translate their manifesto, which was basically okayed and blessed by the king of Saudi Arabia at that time, with the works of Huma Abedin's father, the assistant to the secretary, Hillary Clinton. And by the way, the issue of the Muslim minority affairs, you have also Taha Jabr al-Alawani in the military. He's the man that produces all the Muslim clergy in the military. And I was the first in the country to translate that agenda of the Muslim minority affairs. And well, let me, let me ask a question here, because I'm an outsider looking in. Saudi Arabia is a monarchy run by powerful families, and yet there's an al-Qaeda presence in Saudi Arabia which they actively suppress. Isn't that correct? Yes, but since there are many in the family, in the major families, support al-Qaeda, it's very difficult and embarrassing for the Saudi government. No, but wait, but follow my, 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 quest, my line of questioning. The royal families of Saudi Arabia are terrified of being overthrown by the, by the uh, uh, al-Qaeda members in Saudi Arabia. So how, why would they themselves be terrorists? Well, the, because there are many influential and very wealthy princes in Saudi Arabia that supports al-Qaeda. You look at Abdullah Omar Nasif. Abdullah Omar Nasif, he was the boss of Huma Abedin and the Abedin family in, in, in the United States. Uh, and he was one of the godfathers of al-Qaeda, supported al-Qaeda, and that's been proven fact. But why would they support al-Qaeda who wants to overthrow them and take over Saudi Arabia? Because there are many elements in Saudi Arabia believe that they could be supervisors of the whole apparatus. Okay, so it's like playing with fire. That if they, if they feed the, uh, the, the, uh, the radicals, so to speak, and they, and they let the radicals... Uh, they they provide them with money or whatever and cover. They won't overthrow them. Is that sort of it, it as well? Correct. They worked with Osama bin Laden. They tried to calm him down, you know, but uh, it, it really fired. It's really opening the Pandora box because it's self-destructive for them. They begin to realize it's self-destructive for them, but it was too late. There are many in the Saudi government that supports al-Qaeda and very openly supports al-Qaeda, which the apparatus cannot remove. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Look, it's fascinating, and most Americans can't even follow your line of reasoning because they can't think. The question I have, and this frightens me, is has Obama so demoralized, deballed, as it were, literally deracinated the FBI and the other intelligence agencies with uh, a thought process that literally must cut off when it comes to Islam and terror, that they will never find the actual perpetrators? Well, you know, when you ask about President Obama, my question is, why is he so much involved with the Wahhabi apparatus, and that is his family in Kenya? What's his involvement with Saeed Obama, in which Saeed Obama says, Ismail Obama, his cousin, stated on Al Jazeera television, that the communication between the Kenyan Muslim branch of the family and President Obama continues in secret, and Saeed Obama, his uncle, is the one that communicates with President Obama in the White House, brings the news back. Yet when you examine the family apparatus in Kenya, I have showed evidence galore with photo ops, uh, the memberships of the scholarships they send to Umm al Qura University, which was, by the way, the university founded by uh, Muhammad Abdul Wahab, who is the founder of Wahhabism. So there is a connection between President Obama, his grandmother. In fact, the statements by his grandmother, very clear, supports spousal beating, wife beating. Uh, sending the monies to the Wahhabist apparatus and uh, was invited at the inauguration of President Obama. So, you know, his family were invited at the inauguration of President Obama. It's not like these are people he doesn't know, doesn't associate with. No, he has, in fact, a brother, George Obama. But that George Obama comes from the Christian side of, his, of the family. There are a Christian connection to the Obamas as well. Which, well, well Ed, I'm on your website, showbot.com. It had, I had trouble getting on it because you're being flooded right now. And it, you, your headline is Obama's Wahhabist Fundraising Empire. You're very clear in what you're saying. I mean, you're not mincing words here. You're a former PLO member. You're a former Muslim who became a Christian. Is that correct? 
Correct, and no one can denounce my translation work. No one. They've sent my translation work to the American University in uh, Lebanon. They, they, while well, they condemned me, they couldn't denounce my translation. My translation is absolutely accurate, and that those, many of these reports were examined by Andy McCarthy, who basically was the prosecutor for Sheikh Omar Abdul Rahman, the first attempt to destroy the Twin Towers, if you recall, years ago. Now, wait, look, hold on. I want to go to the story in Boston now. I'm not trying to cut you off. You have so much information. On your website, you, you talk about the roommate of the Saudi whose apartment was, uh, you know, basically uh, uh, turned over yesterday. And you say the, the authorities searched the apartment of a Saudi student now known to be Abdul Rahman Ali Al-Arabi, right? And then you say that they took several bags from the apartment. That's pretty well known in the news. Then you say, enter Al-Harabi's roommate, Mohammed Hassan Bada, Mohammed Bada Wood, and who is also a Saudi, who says, oh, no, he's a nice guy. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. <laughs> no, I'm trying to make it very simple for the listener. You understand what media is all about. If we get too complex, they're going to lose us, and I don't want them to lose us. But we did hear that the roommate, and I think we have sound saying... Uh, that he was a nice man. Neil, do we have that anywhere in this? No, we don't have that. So you're saying he's covering for his roommate, but wouldn't the FBI agents themselves understand all of this, uh, uh, Walid? Of course they would. I think they would know everything. Uh, I think he's let loose uh, for conspicuous reasons, that uh, we've seen the FBI in action in several occasions in which they let people go, especially my, my first cousin, who was involved in the... Uh, with the man who made the movie, uh, The Innocence of Muslims. So, and, and, and that whole, that's another whole fiasco. But uh, FBI is notorious for allowing, you know, how could you explain uh, when there is the chief of police, chief of the prison system in Colorado was killed, uh, and you have a Turkey who basically was a point of interest, which was forgotten about, there's assassinations in the United States of America because this man was the obstacle of not allowing a Turkey to be released. And then you had the United States government send a... Oh, wait, uh, not allowing who to be released? Oh, the mean the man to be released and sent back to Saudi Arabia? Correct. In, uh, there was a Saudi in this prison in, uh, so? in, in, in Colorado who wanted to live out the rest of his uh, sentence in, in Saudi Arabia. He denied it. Is that why you're saying they whacked him? That is possible why he got whacked, and the whole thing was covered up right after that, saying that it was uh, a, a racist issue. It's, it could be the uh, uh, neo-Nazis. It could be this and that. Uh, but uh, who knows? The FBI yes. virus. Yes. Then they started to smear the, the again white supremacists. They they will never make the connection to Islam, which is very interesting unto itself, since all 19 uh, hijackers were from Saudi Arabia, or 19 of them were from Saudi Arabia, and now here we have the largest terrorist event in America since 2001, and the major media is covering up not only the Saudi connection, they're going out of their way, bending over backwards to deny it, and of course, it's because of Obama. Wally, do you live, do you live uh, a secretive life? I mean, are you in hiding? Well, pretty much, and by the way, my name is Shoribat. How do you think CNN found me? You know, they said that I was a fraud, yet they said that I, st I was still a terrorist after I converted to Christianity because they tried to link me to Brevik, that terrorist over there in Europe, which I had nothing to do with. So I guess I wasn't a terrorist, but now, after becoming Christian and beginning to fight for this country, and when I began to combat terrorism, that's when I became a terrorist. So Yes, of course. Well, that's the new America. With the, the twisted mentality of the um, government media complex is, 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 is so rampant, it's hard to follow it. Okay, we have obviously numerous callers, Wally, who want to ask you some quick questions. So I'm going to lay out some ground rules so we don't waste your time, mine, and blow off listeners. When you're called up, such as Rick on KSFO, don't ask me how I am. Don't ask Waleed how he is. Just say, Waleed, here's my question, or here's my question, and then we're going to hang up on you. Uh, and then Waleed will answer it. It's not going to be a back and forth. That way we can get through all the callers. 855-400-7282. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. We'll be right back. All day long, on every other show, you've heard one police chief and this one and that one giving homilies about the bombing, and no one's given you any information. We have Waleed Shubat on, former Muslim Brotherhood member, now a peace activist. He converted from Islam to Christianity. And his website is, is amazing. 
Uh, Al-Qaeda called for bombing sporting events in 2012. Today there was a news story related to this discussion we're having. There was a meeting between John Kerry and Saudi foreign minister that was suddenly closed to the press. Abruptly. Yeah, you hear this? A meeting that Secretary of State John Kerry was to hold with Saudi Arabian Foreign Minister Saud al-Faisal was abruptly closed today to press coverage. The, the State Department, becoming increasingly like that of the ex-Soviet Union, provided no reason for the change, and the sheeple in the press went on with their day as though nothing had happened. Meanwhile, a man was put in the hospital yesterday in Saudi garb, and uh, that's been swept under the rug. So we're talking about it. Waleed, welcome back to the Savage Nation on Line 10. Are you up, Waleed? Waleed, are you there? Yes. I guess Waleed is still here somewhere, I guess. I don't know what's going I'm on. I'm here. But... I'm right here. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. I, I, I'm having a little board operation. So let's go to the callers. Remember, don't say hello. How are you? Let's start with the first caller. KSFO, Rick, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yes, thank you, Michael, for having this godsend on your show. Uh, Wally, my question to you is, what really happened in Benghazi? I had heard that uh, Obama made a deal with the Muslim Brotherhood to exchange the blind sheikh, and I believe this is the truth, and I would like, to, I would like to, you to talk about your foundation. You've helped so many Coptic Christians. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Answer off the air. Go ahead, please. Uh, as far as Benghazi, it's mired in mystery. Of course, Libya, we are made to believe is controlled by an apparatus that is loyal to the United States. But if we look at the street level in Libya, it is really controlled by al-Qaeda. The borders are controlled by al-Qaeda. There's much of al-Qaeda presence in Libya. Right. Hello? Yeah, there's much, much al-Qaeda presence in Libya, and it's controlled by al-Qaeda. Uh, we get tons of information from Libya. W Waleed, why did they execute, why did Hillary Clinton and the others execute... Uh, Muhammad Gaddafi so quickly. Why did they kill him? He's a head of state. He, they didn't even give him a trial. Then they laughed about it. We came, we saw he died. Why, what did he have on them? Well, he, he, he must have known so much information of weapons, transfers, and issues of that sort that the government didn't really care about him being snuffed out. That's, that's my predicament about what happened. I've never seen a world leader executed like this without a, so much as a burp in the American media. It's disgraceful, but that's what happened to Gaddafi. Now we have uh, enemies of America taking over Libya. They're taking over Syria, and we're sending them weapons. We have the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt getting F-16s F and, and tanks. What is going on in the big picture, Waleed? Well, I think what's going on, Michael, is that the United States government thinks that cyber-rattling Iran is the major problem. By arising, a Sunni apparatus in the region, especially in Syria, will cut off the Iranian control all the way to Lebanon, to the northern borders of Israel. That's perhaps the reason behind it. But they keep forgetting that 85% of the Muslim world is Sunni. And what we will have is a rise of a Sunni union in which Turkey is involved. Syria is the board of contention. Turkey wants it. And with the Saudi, this is why we see the Saudi government involved, Qatar involved, all the Sunni apparatus involved in creating the Islamic Caliphate. It's about the Islamic Caliphate. It's about... So are, they, are they, Waleed, are they winning? Are they actually creating a caliphate, including in America? Are they winning? Absolutely. Absolutely great. That's good to hear. It's nice to hear this. Waleed Shobat, stay with us. We have many people calling 855-407-282 to ask you questions. I'll be right back. Now, I'm going to back up a little bit on the Savage Nation. Many of you have been hearing about the, 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 the despicable government media complex hinting at a right-wing motive. And today we hear, well, even Russia saying, well, we don't know who did it. Now they're all backing away. They, they had a Saudi in the hospital yesterday who was tackled not only by a civilian but by the police themselves, and they released him. Now we hear nothing about Saudi. Immediately, don't dare say one word about Muslim, Islam, you're a racist. I predicted this would happen. We don't know who did it, of course, nor who they're going to pin the tail on. But uh, I can pretty much tell you that there's a reason that they released the Saudi. Waleed, welcome back to the program. Why, why did, here's the thing. 
I asked you earlier, why would the Saudis play ball with al-Qaeda within Saudi Arabia when, the, when, the, when al-Qaeda wants to overthrow the monarchy and take over Saudi Arabia? And you're saying, what I learned from you, I think, is that they're, they're, trying, they're playing, they're walking on a, on a uh, thin line here. What they're doing is by feeding al-Qaeda, they figure they'll leave them alone. Is that more or less it? Yes. Uh, Wahhabist is very much in the same line with al-Qaeda. Okay, but wait. So now let's take it to America. Do you think that the same mentality has permeated the Obama apparatus in this country? FBI, CIA, uh, Homeland Security, are they all thinking the same way as the Saudi government? Well, here's the first myth. The first myth is that we think that Islam is a conservative system. If it is a conservative system, then where did we come up with al-ishtirakiyya al-Islamiyya, which means Islamic socialism, spreading the wealth? The whole idea of Mahdism and Caliphate is about spreading the wealth. There's agreement with the Muslim Brotherhood itself stated that we will use the apparatus in the West that is akin to our ideology, and they find it very well. This is why Al Gore, he quotes Abdullah Omar Nasif when it comes to Islam. Do you think the idea of, you know, life begins at the moment of conception exists in Islam? That's not true. Life doesn't begin at the moment of conception in Islam. Islam prides itself talking about the Big Bang Theory, which tickles the ears of all the liberals. Uh, so, you know, you look at every anti-Israel demonstration, who do you find holding hands? You find homosexuals, lesbians, anarchists, socialists, communists, and Muslims. Why? Is Keith Ellison conservative? Can somebody show me anything conservative about Keith Ellison? So the whole apparatus, you know, we think that the Islamic world is akin to Christianity and Judaism. That's, that's, a, that's false. That's not true. It is akin to a revolution. How is it that the homosexual movement doesn't understand that they're, they're playing with those who would kill them? How do they not understand this? Very simple, because the homosexual movement finds in Islam al-ghilmaniyat, which is pedophilia, having sex with boys, in fact, many of the Islamic caliphs had sex with boys. Muhammad II, who took uh, Hagia Sophia, who took the, uh, you know, uh, the eastern part of Christendom, was also himself a pedophile. The pedophilia in Islam is overwhelming. Uh, wow. This is, getting, this, is getting, this is getting deeper and deeper and deeper by the second, Waleed. You know, Waleed, I haven't had a guest on my show for more than five minutes in the, since I started here on these stations but I find your knowledge and your passion and and the way you speak to be so so uh, soothingly real that I don't care where it leads us you know what I'm saying Waleed it is an issue of survival where do you want me thank to live you. friend thank you thank you where am I supposed to go did my, my grandfather fled Russia to get away from tyranny and every day I wake up and I have to say to myself no, Michael, it's not tyranny that's emerging in America. Yes, you wrote trickle-down tyranny. Yes, you can see it with your own eyes. Yes, Obama's father was a Muslim. His adopted father was a Muslim. He went to a, uh, a Muslim school as a child. But no, Michael, don't see what you actually see. Don't listen to what the FBI says. Don't listen to what the DHS says. No, don't actually hear what you hear and don't see what you see. Because if you do, you're going to wake up and realize that you're losing your country so rapidly that one day you'll wake up and you'll become an actual enemy of the people. And that's what I fear, Walid. As sure as I'm sitting here, the day will come in the second regime of Obama, which we're only in the first quarter of, where it will be illegal to even mention Islam and terrorism in the same breath. Do you see that coming? Absolutely. In fact, you mentioned President Obama. It's a sin to say maybe he is Muslim. But my question is, what's the problem if somebody doubts that Obama is a Christian where is his Christian testimony, number one? Number two, what's the problem if people suspected that... Well, what's the problem if he is a Muslim? I don't care if he is a Muslim, because not every Muslim is a terrorist. So I don't understand why he doesn't cop to it. Well, you see, when you talk about terrorism, you talk about an explosive act. But we don't talk about the political activism. That is the part that is the dangerous apparatus, not just the terrorist apparatus. Because you rarely will find a Muslim scholar anywhere in the world that would not support Mahdism, Caliphate, terrorism. What is the difference between uh, Faisal Abdel Rauf, the man behind the Ground Zero Mosque, and Anwar Awlaki? One says, I will do it by an explosive act. The other says, I will do it by a Trojan horse. 
Which one is more dangerous, the Trojan? Well, wait, so why did Mayor Bloomberg, himself of Jewish descent, why would he be in such in favor of the uh, Ground Zero mosque? He was one of the greatest supporters of it. What, what's he thinking? Well, he's a liberal twit. Liberals are that way. It's not an issue of naivety. It's an issue of support. Because for many years, Michael, this apparatus interfered in our government system, in our school. How come we have 500 Muslim student associations all over the university? What is the Oriental studies at the university level? What is that all about? It's all about advancing the Islamist cause. So it's at the FBI level, the CIA level, the government level, the presidential level, the, uh, uh, the State Department, the military, everywhere. Who is Taha Jabir al-Alawani? He's the one that okays all the Muslim clergy. He's the one that says Islam will rule by force. He was the one that I translated all his, his lingo from the Arabic language. It's all accurate. So all the apparatus, you can never find any Islamic organization in America, the major ones that is, that don't support al-Qaeda or support Hezbollah or support Hamas. They all do. Well, let, let's take it down to the level of today. You've got the Democrat Liberal Socialist Party of America wanting to take away guns. They're starting in a very small manner. Let's touch the raw nerve. Was it not the American convert to Islam, the terrorist, who said the other day that al-Qaeda is in favor of gun control in America? Of course. Uh, and why, why would al-Qaeda, let's put two and two together for Charles Schumer and his followers in New York City who can't think uh, beyond their own uh, uh, Milana, their, uh, their uh, shoes, what shoe color to wear that day, why would al-Qaeda be in favor of gun control in America? Well, he'd spell it out for my audience. It's very simple. If people are disarmed, they're easily occupied, they're easily conquered, because the American system itself begins to basically harass people like me and you. And it becomes a persecution of Muslim, uh, of, of non-Muslims by Muslims in this country will become an epidemic. There's no way to defend ourselves. If you don't think that these people execute people in this country, there are many cases of executions by Islamists against activists in this country. You know, so uh, the, the, the apparatus works very well. There's two mechanisms. There is the terrorist in which they make demands, and then there is the Trojan horse in which they enter the government, in which Faisal Abdel Rauf says that America must become Sharia compliant. Who coined that term? It was the man behind the Ground Zero Mosque. He gets on television and he says, I'm concerned about air traffic control. I'm concerned about your, your flights if you don't allow us to build a mosque by Ground Zero. Hello, this is terrorism. Terrorism is not simply an explosive act. But whatever happened to the Ground Zero Mosque, was it uh, stopped? Well, it was basically postponed, but the, still the plan is, you know, continuing because they want to change Faisal Abdurrahman to someone else. I see, but 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 Bloomberg's still in favor of the mosque down there. He's he'd love it to show how liberal he is. Correct, of course, Bloomberg <laughs> people, they're liberals, and that's what the liberals do. Let's not forget Jimmy Carter. He was liberal. What did he do when Pahlavi? Oh no! Don't get me started with Jimmy Carter. He released. First of all, he persecuted the Shah. Then he brought uh, Khomeini back from exile in England. That was the beginning of the spread of radical Islam around the world. Jimmy Carter started the metastasis of the terrorism that we're witnessing today. Jimmy Carter himself did it. Did he do it on purpose? I'm not so sure. Yes, but keep one point very important. That is, the Islamist apparatus did not flourish under Husni Mubarak or Anwar Sadat or Jamal Abdel Nasser. I know that. Mubarak was our best friend. And that is why he was overthrown. Correct. But Islamism flourished in Western societies. It flourished in France. It flourished in Great Britain. It flourished in the United States of America. That's where they found the perfect environment to spread their tactics over... Yes, because of the fear of liberals of being called racist and the brainwashing, the drug use in this country and Western nations, the hedonism where minds are so distracted by things such as gay marriage as opposed to the Islamic takeover of virtually every aspect of our country in a subtle manner at this time. But let's get back to the Boston bombing, Waleed. If an Islamic group is involved with this, why have they not taken so-called credit for it? That's a good question. I cannot answer. Uh... Okay, it's fair enough. No, it's fair enough. There are questions for which there is no answer. And, and I accept that, because no answer is also an answer. Is that correct? 
Correct, but it could be that the signature of this operation happened by an inside group that is loyal to Al Qaeda. It doesn't have to be Al Qaeda itself, but it could be could loyal. It, could it just be? Could it just be a lone, a lone wolf, a single student here in America whose mind is steeped in such hatred and violence, and he simply wanted to do this because he hates America and hates Americans, and he has no ties whatsoever to any organization. Uh, it's very unlikely because the signature of the operation itself, number one. Number two, there are several explosions. Couldn't have been carried out by a single individual. It has to be a group. And I'm going to publish the photos of the three Saudis on my website. People can see it for themselves. And how remarkable. One of them looks like the very Saudi that they scrubbed the, na the, the photo on his Facebook. And, and why did this happen? This is absolutely mind-boggling. Why would the Arab media show the real photo while the American media scrub the real photo for the American people to see? This is an uh, amazing... Waleed, I have so many good calls. Here's a good one at the top. Has Congress asked you to appear before them and, and divulge what you've divulged on the Savage Nation this evening? Have you ever had any congressman interested in what you have to say? The only congresswoman interested, God bless her, is uh, Michelle Bachman. But, you know, again, she's also a politician. And but she was, she was smeared by Hillary Clinton in particular. Uh, that's very interesting when you talk about Abedin, uh, et cetera. That's very frightening. Okay, we're going to come back. Uh, again, the phone number, it's jammed out, 855-407-282. But Waleed Shobat, S-H-O-E-B-A-T, former PLO member, was a Muslim, was a terrorist, was a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, converted to Christianity, devoted entirely, if you go to his website, we have to take him on his word, to uh, spreading the truth about what's going on in the world with regard to the caliphate, and uh, the danger that we all appear to be in because of the Islamic-oriented mentality that has permeated the government media complex. I'll be right back. You know, it's easy to be cynical and say, Waleed, oh, who knows who he is? Why should I listen to him? If you go to his website, you find that he was born in Bethlehem of Judea. His grandfather was the Muslim Mukhtar, chieftain of a very important group, and a friend of the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, a notorious friend of Adolf Hitler. You go and you look. He, he worked with the PLO. He was a member of the PLO. He participated in acts of terror and violence uh, against Israel. He was imprisoned in Jerusalem's central prison for incitement of violence. He was released. He went back to violence. Rioted in Bethlehem and the Temple Mount. Came to the U.S. Worked at a college in the Arab Student Organization. Now listen to this. This is very important. In 1993, the guest, Mr. Walid Shobat, studied the Tanakh, the Jewish Bible, in a challenge to convert his wife to Islam. Six months later, after intense study, Walid realized that everything he had been taught about Jews was a lie. Convinced he was on the side of evil, he became an advocate for his former enemy. Driven by a deep passion to heal his own soul and to bring the truth about the Jews and Israel to the world, Walid Shobat shed his former life and his work as a software engineer and set out to tirelessly bring the cause of Israel to tens of thousands of people throughout the world. Churches and synagogues, civic groups, government leaders and media. And we have him now on the Savage Nation. It's been very stirring, Walid. And I, I mean, I had no idea that you had such a journey in your life. Uh, w one question here. You studied the Jewish Bible in a challenge to convert your wife to Islam. Why? Was she Jewish? She was Catholic. And, of course, every Muslim believes the Bible has been corrupted. She asked me to show her the corruptions in the Bible. She'd be glad to convert to Islam. So I said to myself, praise Allah. I purchased a Bible to look for the problems. And what I found was alarming. I found Arabia in the Bible. In fact, I remember in one show you, you, state, you talked about the harlot of Babylon, Brother Michael. But if I may disagree with you in that notion, if you look at the Bible, that harlot is Saudi Arabia. Just if any doubt, search the Bible for the word Arabia. Look at Isaiah 21, how Arabia is destroyed by Iran, Persia, Elam, Arise, O Elam. The Persians right now are building their nukes. They will use it one day in Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia is the head of the snake from the biblical perspective, in which neither Jew or Christian are wanting to face. You talk to the evangelicals that think that 
that this harlot is the Catholic Church. That's false. It is Arabia. In fact, Babylon is destroyed in the Bible in several locations, and it all refers to the country of Arabia. So we need to focus at Arabia. In fact, I give hours of lectures on where that's in the Bible and how all that works out. And I've converted millions to become Shubatized, to look at my paradigm in which Islam really is very spelled out in the Bible. And it's spelled out by all the nations. Think of all the nations that are taken to the pit in Ezekiel, chapters 28 to 32. Every single one of them are the Islamists. So it's not as God... So you're, a, you're a true, you're a true um, missionary for your cause, and I really admire that. Let's get pragmatic for the few minutes that I have remaining. Waleed Shobat, S H O E B A T dot com, and his book is the case the the case for Islamophobia, which is very intriguing. I'm surprised that you're allowed to even sell the book in Obama's America. Here's a question that's amazing to me, and and I look at this question: Was Boston a test on security? Jeff in Memphis, Tennessee, from WKIM asked, "Do you think that they were testing our security with the Boston explosion?" Waleed. Well, my answer is no. My answer is, if you look at that operation, it's, it's meant to be a grand finale for 15 years. People ask me about terrorism. I said what they're interested in is a grand finale. If you look at the explosives that didn't go off, had everything went according to plan, it would have been akin to what happened in 9-11. It's a major operation, much more major than we think, and especially when we don't know the full details, but we do know. There were several explosive charges intended to kill civilians all throughout the city. And there was a yellow car intended to be a medic. And that usually comes from this kind of signature of the Islamist terrorist, in which they kill the emergency responders. I've given lectures at the FBI, Homeland Security, to no avail on this issue. So it is a dual operation, not just a single operation, with mass intent of mass destruction on several, several locations in the city. Hmm. It's chilling. It's just chilling. Uh, I feared that this would happen. I predicted yesterday, and I have to go back to what I said, that the Saudi that they were holding in the hospital would be released. They would say he had nothing to do with it. He was a, an innocent spectator like everyone else. And then anyone who says that it was an Islamic connection is a racist. It happened today. And then abruptly today, John Kerry had, was supposed to have a press conference with the Saudi foreign minister. They closed it to the public with no explanation whatsoever, and the little men in the media, the little men in the media didn't even ask why. It's shocking to see this going on in front of our eyes. I think we'll continue with this discussion on the Savage Nation later on this week. In the interim, Waleed Shobat, all I can say is thank you for being Waleed Shobat, and thank you for being with us on the Savage Nation. The new book is The Case for Islamophobia, 